Stephen, what, what sort of inspired you to create this, uh, this whole film and the process involved? And you clearly had a vision going into it, so. Yeah, I, I'd just come off the making a more conventional film and wondered, is there another way of doing the basic task, which is to get an audience to engage with the screen for 90 minutes? And um, I'd seen a lot of footage, test footage of uh, shot from moving vehicles on motorways and in cities, and I thought it was quite hypnotic and beautiful. So. I thought, could that be the theatre, that moving image, and then put an actor in there and shoot a play, effectively? And would that work? Would that sustain? And we didn't know until we showed it to an audience, and apparently it does. And and for that, you had to pick an actor that you could have in a car for 90 minutes. And yeah. what, what made you... <laughs> I wasn't scared of staying. <laughs> exactly. Get me out! <laughs> what, uh, what made you pick Tom and, and want Tom to do this role? Well, sparing his blushes, I think if you're going to have if you're going to have someone on the screen for 90 minutes, they better be good and I think he's the best we've got. So he was the first choice and dis I discussed it with him before writing it. So I wrote it sort of knowing that he would do it and um, he's really pulled it off. And what made you want to do this role and take on this challenge? Well, Steve um, and 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 <clears throat> also the the uh, Having an, an artist like Steve uh, want to get roll his sleeves up and go and make a film in a very short space of time, which was uh, which is a complex piece, um, but then not be precious with it uh, in a, in, and uh, and take a lot of risks in uh, in in in, in, in um, implementing its success, uh, successful fruition. You know, really. Um, but it was a uh, it, it was. It was kind of like a shotgun, uh, a shotgun wedding. You know, he he had a script, he had an idea, and he had a couple of weeks, and he wanted to shoot it, and it, it's a big undertaking. Mm. So I wanted to be a part of that as well, and somebody who would take a risk with their work, and uh, and then also the assets of, of uh, the actors and the ensemble and the, the production uh, team that he assembled as well, and everybody was on the same palette, you know, and uh, and and what became obstacles. Uh, presented themselves mm. as opportunities for solution in a purely creative environment where everybody was mm. collaborating to do something which was other than uh, the sort of slightly generic formula of, of movie making or filmmaking today, M much more like a, th a theater environment. Mm. Uh, it was cobbled together, but a, a very, at a very high standard already. So it, 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 it would fail or succeed purely by the endeavor of the effort put in and, and from the sums of, it, of the parts that made up mm -hmm. the team. Mm -hmm. So all of that together was a, 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 um, it, it was pretty non-missable. I didn't want to be not on that team, <laughs> you know, because that, that doesn't happen that often. So it's all of that, really. And speaking of the team, mm -hmm. you know, you had some great actors that mm -hmm. are never seen on screen. Yeah. Um, Tom, what was it like for you to work with them in that capacity and, and in, in those phone calls, and did you spend time with them beforehand, and then, Stephen, how did you get all those people on board? Yeah, uh, yeah the, uh, every actor that was involved was, you know, is, is, is actually, he's a really good actor, so, um, and when you get actors together with a really good script, they go to, they go to work, they don't, you know, there's no, there's no ego, you just go to work, and, and uh, when you have somebody in the room who knows exactly what they're doing, what they want, and, and the writer is in the room to, to not only watch you, but initially you've got to read the script for them and look for their approval. Mm. Like, was that awful? Mm. You know, do you like us? And once you pass that, that sort of, yeah, we like you, it's cool. You, mm. People then start to, to file away what it is that they do in their own department, you know, whatever their character is. And that room was, we spent five days in the room together, which is a pretty standard rehearsal room environment where once people get over the meet and greet and, and the chemistry, they, you know, they really bond and they start mm. to, it's like that. Like elves in the, you know, Christmas, elves. Christmas elves, they start making the toys, you know, with Papa the Christmas, as it were, you know what I mean? And Steve sort of sat there and, and, then, and, and went back and forth and just put out the orders and then and, uh, it became a sort of happy hive of uh, creativity. And, and when you work again with, with people who, who literally do come to work and, and enjoy it, then you can start to play at a very, a really nice standard and a really good level and, and, and things start to grow and grow as you add on the filming and the, and the DLP and the sound and mm. editing right through to you know completion even in the marketing you know mm. um, it, it, this, this project drew out like talent from every aspect mm. of, the, of, uh, of, of film on something which is actually a very small and contained mm. piece which, which you know ultimately comes back down to script as well and the, the influence of the you know, of largely of Steve you know having a draw, the ability to draw people in through his work and through his personality. So 
uh, working with the actors was uh, was again symptomatic of the you know the beginning, which was ultimately Stephen the script, and everybody got on really Fantastic. really really well. It was red wine, I think, that that, that drew them to it, <laughs> and biscuits, because that's all that they got. I mean, it, it's a, it's amazing that they are pretty much the best actors around in the UK, and and mm. they agreed to do this. They weren't going to be on screen. They were going to be in a not very nice conference room from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. night after night. And they all agreed to it and, and, and committed to the project. That was the thing. Everyone involved committed themselves to the idea and to the project. And it was, um, I mean, the result is amazing. It's fantastic. It was an event as well. Mm. It's an event for artists. You get, you get something like that. Yeah. So you want to be part of that. It's like yeah. you want to go to that party. Yeah. You know, so it's a, it's a kind of artist's yeah. party, mm. but, you know, it's work. But you didn't want to miss that. Mm. They're talking together incredibly well. Um, can you talk a little bit about the character of Ivan Locke and, and how you <coughs> elaborated together the, the details between the accent mm -hmm. and what he's wearing and the mm -hmm. job, how you guys collaborated together to sort of create this character? I mean, I, I wanted to create the most ordinary person, to that, uh, someone that you wouldn't normally make a film about and see the heroism within his decisions and his life. Um, so he works in construction, he's married, he's got two kids and this, he's made a mistake, an uncharacteristic mistake and he decides to put it right and the, the whole journey is about the consequences of that decision. Um, having written it then when uh, Tom really brought Ivan Locke to life and brought his physical and uh, dialect reality to the table and um, he's Welsh for a very weird reason. Yeah, <laughs> subsequently we found that in hindsight. Um, but actually, no, um, the, 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 Ivan Locke is on the page, is, is totally on the page, and is everything that he says or people say about him or to him, you, you, there, it, it's very difficult to, to miss him um, instinctively, you know, get to embody uh, that guy. It would be nice to see other actors play him, to be honest, mm. and see what they bring to him, because it's, he's a very strong character and, and very easily approachable. Um, and accessible in, in many ways, so it's a pleasure to play. Um, so a couple of choices that I made, um, which were we needed, uh, I mean, which were re requested. That mm. you know, obviously, he's a, a, um, a man who works uh, from the floor up. He's a, he's he's worked in construction all his life, and now has become prominently successful at what he does. But he's worked from the floor up, so he's um, he's a, a working man. We needed to have a working man accent, but um, but in our, in the British Isles, you know, there's there's many regional accents, and a lot of them come with specific stereotypical baggage. So we had to sort of choose one, and then everyone's going to come with some mm. sort of history to it. But uh, Wales, we thought was seemingly you know fit a lot of ticked a lot mm. of good boxes mm. because uh, you know you got a lot of solid men come out of Wales, and uh, you know you, that Richard Burton sort of mellifluous. Um, Gent gentleness in, in the voice as well as being strong, having a strong presence it would, would be something to that would be nice to emulate, but also w was, um, you know, based on the case file evidence, you know, it would make sense that he mm. was in Welsh. Mm. And, uh, and so we, we zeroed in on that, and uh, that being a nice voice because, you know, the people at the end of the phone are hearing some pretty distressing stuff, mm. and, uh, and he's got to calm some and put out some fires, so it would be nice for him to have a voice which was at least soothing and gave off the, the, the you know, calm. So Welsh was what it was, so Welsh, I, and, and, and I tracked down a gentleman um, who I believe to be Welsh, who subsequently <laughs> turns out to not be Welsh, so my ear is terrible. But that's, that's so anybody who's questioning my Welsh accent is absolutely right. Because <laughs> I only found out a week ago that the man I based it on is not Welsh. Is not Welsh. So <laughs> but it doesn't matter, never let that get in the way of good story like so. or character. Next okay. question. Okay. Um, and then, you know, this making this film was such an insular process in how you guys did it. How has the response been now that you've actually been able to share it with other people? Well, the great thing is that the response hasn't been about how the film was made. It hasn't been about, you know, that this is a one man in a car, isn't that, a, you know, that it's a gimmick. The response when the lights go up at the end of the screen is very emotional. A lot of people are very moved by it and they engage with the story and the character. Mm -hmm. And they sort of forget that, you know, that, that, that this is a different way of making a film. and. Um, a lot of people have said they forget that they haven't seen the other characters because they, they make them up themselves in their own head. So people come to this and are, you know, requested to use their own imaginations, which I think people really enjoy. 
and what kind of response have you been hearing? No, my Welsh accent is dodgy. In Wales. <laughs> in Wales. It's not welcome in Wales. Well, it's not welcome in Wales, no. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, um, no, no, it, it's, do you know what I think? Steve is absolutely right. It, it, um, get over the first six minutes, and you're, uh, like, when it's like reading the script, you're suddenly transformed in, uh, uh, trans, transported, sorry, into the dynamic of the world, of, of Ivan's world, and you, you, you are, you're presented with his life, and very quickly the dynamics start to change. Before you know it, you are not really watching a film anymore, you're watching somebody's <laughs> life fall apart. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and, and it is interesting to hear people's reactions afterwards, that they either don't like him, or they go, you know, you, you know, the girls are like, you idiots, you know, or, you know, you know, you men, and, and this, that, and the other. Or some people are like, oh, I would take him back, you know, and, mm. and then and this guy's like, oh my God, that was close to home. Yes. Or, you know, yeah. There's a lot of very human reactions to, and I kind of like the fact that it's not a thriller, there's no car chases, or there's no explosions, because you don't need one, do you? Mm. You know, it, it's not what I expected, you know, and, and th these are all very positive responses, mm. because they obviously people have been allowed to think. And I think we don't um, credit our audience with as, as much Absolutely. intelligence as they have, Absolutely. and then some, because mm. I, I, and it's not and, I, and it's not just a testament to Steve's writing and Steve's work in Locke, but I think also in, in everything um, going forward with work. I, I think people really do, you know, there is a place for, mm. you know, for for for, for story, yeah, for good old right. story exactly. and real people talking, mm. not just for the sake of talking, but like um, genuine life issues and mm. and drama. It's not boring. <laughs> not at all. All right. Well, I thank you for thank your time. You. Thank you.